I'd really hope to get drafted, make it to the MLB, and then hopefully future Hall of Famer. He's got all the talent. I know he's got all the work. He wants to take this all the way to the big leagues. Tanner's work ethic is second to none. He's great at fielding, hitting, pitching. To have the determination, the will to get better at something he wants to do for the rest of his life. The kid lives and breathes baseball. My name is Tanner. I'm 13 years old and I play baseball. Better, better. Don't get under that baseball. Stay level with it. Stay level with it. Now, how perfect was that? It's a pleasure to work with the kid. He's got a work ethic, goal. Dead red perfect, kiddo. Dead red perfect. My name is Chad Allen. I am a uh, hitting coach in uh, Double A for the Chicago Cubs. Some of the drills I do are very similar to what I do with the guys in the minor leagues. I mean, we do high tee to keep his backside from going forward, to help him understand that if his backside forward, he's going to be susceptible to fastballs up, fastballs in, and breaking balls down. If I'm swinging as I'm landing, what am I doing? Just a little here, a little forward. But if I'm going boom, boom, then I have everything behind it. Right now we've been working on keeping my hands in the side and getting extension through. I have a pretty big problem of leaning back and that causes a bunch of pop-ups. When you're going to drive down to hit the baseball, if I go here, I'm gonna hit a pop-up. But remember when we talked about our chest getting even with our front side, I'm driving down. That's how I finish balanced. That's a lot better, dude. One of the best qualities I think the kiddo has is just the ability to understand his body. I think it's him taking a swing and not me having to tell him what he did, but going, I felt it. That's a huge quality for a kid at his age to understand is, I felt it, now go make a correction. That's tough Ooh. in the minor leagues, even in the big leagues, but the great ones can do that. Dead, red, perfect. I'd say I realized I was pretty good at it when I had the opportunity to play on an older, I think it was two or three years older team. And that was the day my dad and I made the decision I was either gonna stop playing baseball or play on a lower level or I was gonna step up and start working hard. Tanner works his ass off. Most kids at that age, I don't think have figured it out. They're kind of like, oh, baseball's fun or soccer's fun or whatever it is. They're just doing it because it's enjoyable. But Tanner has a goal in mind and he's grinding every day to get to that goal. It feels like you got a little bit of a responsibility to pick yourself up and keep going. A lot of it is trying to build the big muscle groups like your leg and your upper body. We do a bunch of squats and that's really good for baseball players to get that leg drive through. When I first started training, he was like a little boy and now it's night and day different. For example, uh, that little kettlebell he was carrying overhead today, when we first started squatting, that's what he would use. And it was everything he could do to maintain proper form, proper mechanics, and even just the strength in general. So we've transitioned from very, very foundational basics all the way to high-end performance training. He's just so locked in on his goal, and I think he understands because we've had the opportunity to talk to major league ball players, major league coaches, minor league players, minor league coaches, that he understands that is so hard to get to where you wanna go. From eight, it was a transition from the worst kid on the team to nine to, all right, you got something, to 10, I would put my son at 10 years old against any kid in the United States. This was an MVP award that I won in a tournament where I think I hit either six or eight home runs in five games. And that was very, very special to me because they only handed out one and there was maybe 20 teams in this tournament. So it was very special to me. These are some of my rings right down here. And then I have a whole goblet of rings in there. I won this medal when I was in North Carolina playing with top tier. And this one also, we didn't win this one, but we got second. So again, two very, very special things. These other two giant trophies. This was in Kansas City, and I'm pretty proud of that because that was a very hard tournament and it was a well-organized one, I love this. A couple of my bobbleheads, don't worry, Josh Hamilton is not actually missing two arms and his bat in real life. It's just something I got when I was three and I didn't know what to do with it. I won this one last tournament. It's really heavy though, it's in a Kona glove. They're still the only glove that's still made in the USA. Really good gloves, they last forever. I really like Rawlings. I think they have 
a really good glove. I think that their gloves break in pretty fast and they last a long time. The way that I normally break in my gloves is I'll hit it with the hammer and you just beat it until it gets pretty loose and then you can form it and then you keep on doing that process over and then you play catch with it. So the lean back happened after contact, right? Mm -hmm. I hope that Tanner goes as far as he wants. He works his face off. The thing about it is, is people talk about like, he does so much baseball, he does so much baseball. Isn't, aren't you worried about it? I'm not, because I'm gonna tell you right now that baseball teaches about life. It's not about a sport. You're gonna get knocked down in life. You're gonna get people who tell you you're not good enough. You're gonna fake. That's a terrible ball. In which your arm's got. Yeah. Yeah. It's there. Which causes? Under. Okay, and it can lead to some rollovers. So that's the importance of keep maintaining those big angles. When you're going to hit, you can't be strong because I can I can move your wrist and I can control you by applying pressure with just two fingers and hurting you. Right. So if you want to be in a strong position, you have to maintain that angle that you start. In. The sport of baseball will teach you how to keep pushing through, keep working hard. There we go. I think no days off means kind of what it sounds like. I'd say you work your butt off, do everything you can, and you don't really get a rest. You keep going, no days off. Where do you see him going? As far as he wants. He's got everything in place. He's got a fire inside of him that you usually don't see until you get to guys like big league age. He's going to have to prove to himself that he's going to have to get better every single day, which he already has that in his mind that he's going to do that. So for me, the biggest challenge for him is going to be understanding, hey, there's probably people out there right now that are better than you. But guess what? That doesn't mean you can't get better than them. I'm really most proud of Tanner that he's a good person. I think at the end of the day, that's all you can really hope for as a dad. Your job is to teach them how to be a good person, how to be a good citizen, how to be a good man. I think all my children have done a great job of that, and I'm most proud that they are good people. Don't stop working. No days off means don't stop working, you know? Always on the grind. Always look to get better. Right up there with some of the best. I mean, his success isn't by accident. It's a tough position, and he's a tough kid. Has a heart for the game. I see him going MLB. For a perfect game, he's number 62 overall prospect and the number nine catcher nationally. And in the state of Texas, he's the number six overall prospect and the number three catcher. Prep Baseball Report, he's the number 29 overall prospect and the number two catcher. My name's Dylan, I'm 15 years old, and I play baseball. Good. Stay there, stay balanced. So with Dylan getting ready for his first high school season, we've actually been hitting every day this week. There won't be a whole lot of us even talking. Usually the radio's going and he's hitting or he has his AirPods in. Good, the T doesn't right. lie. He can get everything he needs from there. I train about probably seven days a week. I stay motivated because I love the game. How cool would it be to grow up and be able to make money off of a game you played as a child? So once we get done with the tee work, we move into front toss. Everything about front toss is just getting his bat path correct and making sure he's not getting on his front foot. Once we move back from this, we'll just start going live. You're trying to hit him really hard, we're gonna have to stay down right there. Yeah. Right? And it's not gonna be able to get to this. There's not really any training tools or, you know, fanciness, we just talk. Once he feels it and he can see it, then uh, he can make those adjustments on his own. And over the years, I've tried to help him be able to coach himself. Good, very good. There's nothing more to it. And then he'll hit there for a while. We'll go through probably bucket, bucket and a half. And we'll move on to do our catching or whatever we're gonna do that day. Good. The age I was when I started catching was about seven or eight. It was the first time there could be a catcher in the game, and um, I was actually a shortstop at the time. They asked me to go back there, and I said sure, and ever since then I just fell in love with it and became really good at it. Big thing about a catcher is pitch presentation. We work on making sure that his body doesn't give strikes away, making sure when the umpire is looking, all that's possible with wrist strength. 
if you're an umpire and you're setting up behind him and you're getting ready to see the pitch come in, it's very important is that this part of his, his arm right here is moves as little as possible. So if his arm's not moving a lot, this part of his arm and his shoulder, then it's more deceptive for the umpire. So if he's all the way down here, he can move that ball all the way up to here. And that umpire thinks that ball might have traveled six or eight inches higher. And the more and more that he gets comfortable doing that, the higher velocity he can face, the sooner that he can make an impact on his high school team, the college team, or pro team, wherever, however far he can take it. Push, get up. Good, step off. Two more. And for him as a catcher, he's coming from that crouch position. He doesn't get to go down and then back up. So we're trying to build that impulse, that power, in as quick a time period as possible so he can get out of his crouch on the field and throw guys out. Balance, controlled. Good. It's the basic core, right? You got your obliques and your hips working, but really, again, it's just rotational power. For a baseball player, this is definitely gonna help with hitting and throwing. I'd like to come here like two to three times a week. We live 45 minutes away, so I get in here as much as I can. Most everything that he does that helps him in the last couple years has been in the weight room for legs, arms, upper body, back, all of it. I make sure he takes in adequate proteins, adequate carbs. We don't ever have junk food in the house. I pay attention to how many calories he's intaking, making sure that he is eating enough protein for the amount of activity he has. Because he's so active, he has to replenish that. So to keep him healthy, I watch what he eats every day. I pack his lunch, we do meal prep. He takes pasta salad and chicken and almonds and fruit and protein bars to school every day and what he calls a big hideous lunch box. Being a catcher, you you have to be in top physical shape from top to bottom. He works all out almost every day. All right, ready? Come on. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today. Thank you for our many blessings. Thank you for the, all the opportunities you give us every day. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's my favorite thing to watch him play baseball and watch him do what he loves. It's his happy place. And for a parent, it's, it's a special thing to watch your child in their happy place. This isn't what we want from him. It's continuously always been what he wanted. And one of the things that we've always done is we've never forced him to practice, ever. Now, we might force him to do chores around the house and things he doesn't want to do, but when it comes to baseball, we wouldn't. He's a competitive player, and when I say competitive, it goes to his grades, to ping pong, to tie a shoe faster than the guy next to him. It's just whatever he can do, he loves that. Uh -huh. When I got uh, my offer, I was 14 years old. Oklahoma's got a chance to watch him play in a few tournaments. He had a really good turnout in Atlanta, and by the fourth or fifth game, we were walking back, and our coach said, hey, just talk to the coaches at Oklahoma, and they want you to call them. He had been talking to the coach at OU for a few months. We knew that they would be following him around to watch, and he had a really good tournament in Atlanta, and it happened almost immediately. The feeling I had when they offered me was kind of like unreal. I didn't really know what to do. It took a couple of weeks, almost months, for it to actually click and understand that what just happened. It was kind of an all-around good thing for our family and we just decided why wait. Instead of waiting a couple years, we knew that that was where we wanted to be and it made no difference. We committed to them as much as they committed to us. Right now I have seven touchdowns in three games. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Physicality, speed-wise, he's already ahead of the game. He's a monster. I'm gonna just be honest. I think it's only going to get better. He's 13 right now. I can only imagine what he's going to look like at 16. He's probably a Division I type athlete down the road. Yes, yes. Mentality-wise, he's already there. Maturity-wise, he's already there. How many football players can hit a baseball besides Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson? Yeah, boy! Yeah! My name's TJ. I am 13 years old, and I play football and baseball. Not many kids that you see in eighth grade that are already six foot three, you know, 170, 180 pounds. I love football because I'm able to score a touchdown and the crowd goes wild and all the attention goes on me. TJ got into football when he was 11. That's when we first put him into real contact sport. I practice every day. We do a lot of conditioning, a lot of hitting, a lot of going over new plays. Out of baby! Each week we install a new play that we go over for the next two. Hey now Travis, hey your angles changed now. All the stuff that I do, I'm always gonna get better at.
Our mission is to make him one of the top high schoolers in football or baseball that's coming into the 2020 class. I see definitely a lot of training. You get that op again, you better lay wood on him. You understand me? Yes, sir. Say go. Cut, cut. Hey. Don't be a sitting duck, man. Make a move, man. You know he's coming. I think with TJ's physical capabilities and his size, if we go ahead and stay focused on the training, we'll make TJ one of the number one athletes in, in Arizona. Definitely. Oh, did he catch that? <laughs> he caught that. I think the biggest thing this year that I see with him is he's trying to lead the other kids on the team. Certainly he's got some physical gifts that are a little bit different right now at his age. Say go! Get up and come forward. Forward, forward. Forward. There you go. Get up and go. Get up and go. Get up and go. Make a move. There we go. He certainly can make up for it at this level, but I want to make sure that he's doing those right things so that next year uh, when he moves on to the high school level that he's fully prepared and he can uh, make that transition and be ready to go for that. He's worked really hard at it, and I think a lot of that helps our football team. There you go. We are here at uh, Copper Basin K-8 uh, baseball field. Uh, we did a little bit of practice with Travis. What I tell him is to practice every day, at least pick up a ball. You tell him to do something, he won't ask you twice. As long as he's got the drive and he enjoys himself, he could go as far as he could go. It just depends on him. I mean, as long as he's got the drive, he could make it at anything he wants. I play center and first. I love being able to run and being able to find the ball and catch it. We started taking it more serious when he got into sixth grade. He got a first team, it was probably baseball. When he was 11. The positives for the dual sport is it keeps him in shape, it keeps him running. His footwork is always improving because for both of them, you definitely have to sprint. It's helping with his speed and his endurance. Overall, just being able to do both helped him in so, so many different ways as far as being a leader and knowing when to call a play or when to switch. All the way, TJ! All the way! All the way! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Woo! Another one! Tap it. Once you tap it, pick it right back up. Two, three, four, back straight, five, drop. He's just 13, we haven't really put too much uh, weights on him. We're slowly introducing him into the regimen of the workout and the free weights and things of that nature. All sports are related in the weight room, you know what I mean? It just depends on if you're dedicated enough to put in the work to get where you need to be to be successful. There you go, breathe out as you push up, breathe out as you push up. His current routine in the mornings would be um, 100 push-ups, he does 100 sit-ups, he does 100 squats, and about 80 power jumps, and that's Monday through Friday. You do a lot of curls, you do a lot of biceps, gotta have big guns. I mean, for someone who's got, obviously, the size and the physical capabilities that he does, you know, he definitely works out like, like he's just a four foot one kid trying to make it on team, you know what I mean? So someone like that who has that ability, but still has the dedication to put in the work in the weight room and on the off the field, it's excellent. It's coach's dream, man. Good, grab water. Father, we thank you for the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 If it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't be able to be where I am right now. TJ is able to balance things because he has a great support cast. If I'm not able to get to him, I have my fiance Natasha here. If Natasha's busy, we have grandparents. We have just a whole structure around TJ. I think the biggest thing that we push for TJ is education. Regardless of anything in sports, do your education first. He's an honor roll student, student of the month. No Days Off means a lot to me. For people around my community in Cobber Basin to know that I'm doing this and for them to be a part of it, you know, it's, it means a lot to me. It's really an all moment because I know where we came from just um, in a matter of two years. You know, in a matter of two years, we've, you know, struggled. We struggled at, at, at times and now we're, we're dominating. I keep saying that, but it is the truth. It, it is definitely the truth with TJ. He's doing his thing. I normally wake him up. I don't know about that. It's kind of like a chain. Yeah, I'm usually out there first. I mean, it's incredible, especially for their age. Most kids want to, you know, play video games all day. They want to work. They are extremely competitive. I think it's great that they have each other. They're kind of a yin and yang, and they balance each other out. There are days where it's great to have somebody push you when you're not as motivated as you might have been the day before. They put in the time. They have the work ethic. They have the drive. They can go as far as they want. I like fielding personally. 
hitting. It's just like, it's so satisfying to just hit the ball right on the barrel and the ball just like soar through the air. Hi, I'm Dol Messino. Hi, I'm Charlie Messino. And, and we, we play, play baseball. baseball. So we wake up at six o'clock, we get downstairs, we walk out, we get in the garage, top hand, bottom hand, work off the tee. Charlie and Dylan fell in love with baseball at a very early age. Uh, we have pictures of them at kind of one and two years old running around with a bat. And they just immediately loved it. Since I was seven years old, my dad would take me in here and we just hit for, in the morning. And then I just kept on doing that until this point where he doesn't have to come in here yeah, and we, we could do it together. Too. Then we hit two hands T. Then we'll do front toss. And then we'll throw the football for arm strength. They push, they help, they needle each other, they drive each other crazy, but they're each other's best friend. Atta boy. Having a brother like working out with you, getting up with you is great. They help you when you're not as committed and then you help them when they're not as committed as well. So it's kind of a win-win for like every situation. So these are all of, all three of our medals. So this is Charlie's, this is my brother Sean's, and this is mine. Well, I have a lot of trophies, but probably my favorite thing is these rings right here. These are uh, perfect game rings. We both won MVP in the championship game. This is our favorite trophy just because it's cool sharing with each other, like just playing together and then actually yeah. winning the same trophy. It is very cool. We get in here, we get dressed for school. If it's Tuesday through Thursday, we have to wear a suit and tie. Go to school, come back. Then we would have baseball practice. Good to go. Go four hands directly across. I started working with Charlie and Dylan about four years ago. I mean, these kids work five, seven days a week, sometimes two a days. So, you know, the amount of work that they put in, there's no way you're not going to see unbelievable results. Oh, I decided to play catcher because my brother Jake played catcher in Little League. I just saw that position. I was like, man, that, that's probably really fun. When you're catching, like you're in every play, you're always involved with something. Shorts out. I just felt like I just want to be there. I, I want to take charge, and I just want to play that position. Someone who plays shortstop, you have to have fast hands, uh, and you got to work on your transfers. Like say double play, you give a feed. You got to be quick and throw it out. There you go. Go too bare handy. Dylan's always kind of working on the timing to get around the ball. Charlie, it's frames, it's presenting the ball, it's blocks. What we're mainly working on right now is trying to get faster. Oh boy. Working with lateral range, throwing on the run. Don't transfer away from your body, keep it in here. Better. So then after that we hit, off the tee we did check swing drill, 45 degrees. Good, righty. Dylan's been switch hitting since he was seven years old. You know, we just turned 13 years old and I'm not sure too many people would know if he was a natural lefty or a natural righty. It actually is like dealing with two completely different hitters. Even his mentality, lefty and righty, is different. So it's almost like talking to two different people. On the left side, he's much more focused on his mechanics. Righty, he just wants to hit the ball as hard as humanly possible. So we're trying to get him to be a little more accurate on the right side. Watching lefty guys, like say Bryce Harper swing lefty, and then I was watching like Mike Trout hit righty, and it was just like, I could do this after I practiced for a while. I just started to do it, and I kept doing it to the point where I am now. So then we did the rack, turning, focusing on bat path, uh, the way your swing is. Dylan, he had a major imbalance right hip, left ankle. So over the last two to three months, it's all been corrective exercises to 
pretty much balance him out. So it's a lot of single leg eccentric movements. And then Charlie has bad external rotation. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. So they're probably at the facility five days a week and then they started doing ballet a couple of years ago. It's great for flexibility, it's been great for balance, coordination, core strength. Very good. Now turn to the other side. Still control whole body, doing great. There are two group of muscles in the body and both these muscles need to be trained equally in the body. Ballet focus on that tiny small muscles. We started doing ballet four or five years ago. It's great. We work a lot on stretching, mobility, arm work. Everything you think of a ballet or a ballerina does, we do, except we don't wear tutus. Yeah. Control, shut. Great. We've really seen over the last couple of years that the two of them really just have taken to their training, their, uh, their desire to compete. And you can see that you know they have huge smiles on their faces when they do it. I'll say long-term goal, just to make it into the MLB. But we're so young that we have to have the many short-term goals, like first be a great high school player, maybe after that college player. We have to have many smaller goals to help us get to our big goal eventually. You know, I think it's wonderful to have those dreams and goals, and uh, I hope you know they're all achieved and attained. But. I think it's also important to stay grounded, you know, and they like being kids. I mean, they just like, you know, they've got two other brothers besides them. You know, it wouldn't be surprising if we sat out here and a football game broke out in front of us. I mean, that's, that's, that's what they do. That's who they are. So they keep it in perspective. A note is off to me I means just you're working hard, you're grinding at anything you want to be good at to the point where you're getting good at that and staying good just working hard 24-7, giving it all you can, basically. Are there any other differences between the two of you? Yes, I have better hair, let's say that, no. He's stronger, probably. Um, I get more girls. Don't put that in there. Give me one more. Throw it a little bit away now. 